Hi, everybody, and thanks for being here. And yes, we've been battling since we moved in uh, to the new office lighting issues, and I adjusted them last night, and I've made them much worse, hence the glare on my glasses. And uh, spent the last 30 minutes wrestling with it to the point of no return. So I'm going to go on with the show and work on that. I kind of reorganized the, the studio a bit late last night and uh, didn't do a check until sitting down. So, pardon me. <laughs> with that said, thank you all for being here. Glad to report the showers and storms weren't as severe as what we thought. Well, we weren't really expecting them to be severe, but just not packing as much of a punch as we had thought. They're uh, going to be, though, in the, in the forecast for the next few days, but only to the tune of 20 or 30 percent. A beautiful weekend lies ahead. More on that in a few moments. A couple of other things, including two big stories out of Lawrence County. A lot of pride being felt from a lot of folks there in the sports and entertainment worlds tonight. We'll go into both of those in just a few seconds. A road closure tomorrow in Johnson County. Uh, Board of Education, excuse me, the Big Sandy Regional Jail Board meeting from last week, getting caught up since I was out last week, in which they are trying to account or find uh, possibly two shotguns that may be in the jail. Uh, not, of course, with inmates, but just uh, as part of an inventory list that's unaccounted for, uh, as well as a discount and a penalty phase for counties, as well as one county still very much behind in its payments to the jail, and a host of other news and information. I do have an announcement, and it was actually not to your surprise that we drink um, everything around here pretty much out of the Lee's styrofoam cups. So they're bright white, and we noticed a pink tint to the water uh, in them earlier today, which brought to our attention, which brought forth a phone call to Sean Rowe with the Sagersville Water Works, who said that the water plant did indeed have a malfunction with the sodium permanganate feeder last night. Sounds much more serious than it is, from what I understand. It resulted in what we have noticed is some very light pink water today, and you really could only see it. I couldn't even pick it up on camera, but in a bright white styrofoam cup, you could notice just a very light pink tint to it. Nevertheless, Rowe says the plant was not running when they noticed a small hole in the line going to the feeder, causing the line to feed a small amount of the compound into the tank. You noted that though it was a small amount, the sodium permanganate is very concentrated, resulting in the pink tint to the water. He says the water has remained completely safe to consume, and they flushed all the lines uh, all day, so the water should be losing its pink tint now. Sodium permanganate is a form of chlorine that's used to kill, of course, the organics in the water. In no time, he says, was it an issue of any health or other concern. But just a little FYI there for you. With that said, we'll go right now to some local governmental coverage, so to speak, specifically talking about the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center's most recent regular meeting. It was held days ago. A couple of topics of discussion which we'll cover in tonight's report are the inventory of two possible shotguns they are trying to account for, as well as money matters. One county still in litigation between the jail and that county uh, in serious arrears for their medical bills. Uh, and also, on a financial note, they discussed and motioned and voted on a discount for participating counties and a penalty phase for counties that don't pay on time. Early on, financials in regards to Martin County, the Big Sandy Jail Authority Board still in litigation with Martin County over unpaid fees. In this particular instance, they were talking about unpaid medical bills to a company who was represented by two different individuals, some $83,000 in arrears for medical bills, averaging more than $4,000 a month is what they say Martin County owes and is accumulating at this time. They voted to table the issue pending some more information that they hope to gather before looking into when and for how much the Jail Authority Board will be liable for those payments should Martin County continue to not pay those medical bills for its inmates. From there, the Jail Board discussed surplusing some old or unused equipment, specifically a van that hadn't been used for years, which also brought up the question of the whereabouts of two referred to at least shotguns unaccounted for if they are still at the jail. Here's my question. <laughs> um, we need to open the best Mr. Williams. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I need to figure out where the shotgun is. So, I'm bringing it to your attention because you need to know. 
I'm okay. What I'd, what I'd like to do then is us get an answer on this and, and be ready for an next board meeting um, and and you head up an internal investigation and to find out where they, if, if was it a mistake or where'd they go? Uh, you know, I don't think we need a, a motion for that. I don't think no. we need a motion, but we, we need, just need to know. Yeah. We just need to know. That, that is, because I was, the reason why I brought that up is if we never use shotguns, we should get rid of them too. Seal bill, same scenario. That's why I brought it up. But the problem is, is now. Or if they're over there, yeah. I don't know where they're at. I know, me too. Yeah, I like to know where they're at too. <laughs> if they're hit around that building somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hansford, go ahead. Does anyone know when these were You know, you know about as much as we do at this point. I think it was three months ago we had that discussion. If I remember, maybe four months ago we had that discussion about. February. February. Because you know, I, I asked the question, do we have firearms in the building? And the answer was yes, we have two shotguns and they are locked up, this and that. Um, and we can actually go back and review the tapes. It'll be, they'll be on there. In some other discussion, there was a motion made to give participating counties of the Big Sandy Jail a discount for paying on time and imposing a penalty for the first time for those who go over a 30-day period. 10% discount if it's paid within 30 days. We've never had a uh, reason for everybody to pay on time and never had a penalty for those who don't pay. 10% discount for, just a minute, 10% discount for, um, so for those counties. And if they don't pay within 31 days, I talked to Mark about it, he said you know, 30, 30 days is kind of the magic mark. Then after mm -hmm. that, after that, uh, hold on, after oh. that, there's a 5% penalty. Okay, so after they go 31 days, there's a penalty. penalty. Okay, right. after 31 days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I so move. I'll Motion second on the it. floor. Second on the floor. Any other discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, Any opposed? Uh, One opposed. Yeah. Okay. No, he's uh, okay. No, he's uh. <laughs> Motion carried. Motion carried. All right. I'll be right back. Appalachian Wireless wants to know if you're tired of settling. Settling for a phone you didn't really want because it was more about the cost of the device rather than the phone you really wanted. Well, Appalachian Wireless has the solution, and it's called the Appalachian Advantage. With Advantage, every phone model is back on the table because you only have to pay the taxes on the device you really want. Many of our hottest smartphones are less than $50 up front, then a few extra dollars on your monthly bill with Appalachian Advantage. Payment agreement is required. See store for complete details. SSI and disability cases are harder to win these days. You need all the help you can get. If the government has turned you down, I will not. Many factors are considered when a claim is being processed, like your age, education, physical, and mental disabling conditions. When it comes time to winning your disability case, you should not face a federal judge alone. You need an attorney who is experienced, determined, hardworking, knowledgeable, and dedicated to helping you win benefits that you deserve. If you need help with your SSI or disability case, Call me, Donald Wayne McFarland, and let me go to work for you. It's time to see what a great time just 10 bucks can get you while you help out a lot of amazing organizations. It's time for the 16th annual McGoffin County Community Day, featuring Russell Moore in Third Time Out, Ralph Stanley II and the Clinch Mountain Boys, Hammertown, Blue Highway, Nathan and Chessie Arnett Band, Route 1081, Terry Miller and Traveler, plus the Project Echo Kids and a special performance by Waylon Bays. And of course, more food, fun, games, and prizes than you can stand. And not only does your 10 bucks get you in, but it also gets you entered to win this Ford Fusion to be given away that night and kids under 12 get in free at the 16th annual McGoffin County Community Day Saturday, August the 17th all starting at 10 a.m. Your new IGA has fresh brewed coffees and delicious donuts made seven days a week. Daily made breads piled high with any meat or cheese you can think of and come and taste the salads broccoli and cauliflower, cornbread and their gourmet chicken salad made fresh right here. They've got fruit and vegetable and meat trays made with a little love and celebrate anything with perfectly professionally made cakes. All fresh and ready for your next meal, party, or event at your Sagersville IGA where it's a new day, place, and wait. Getting the best deal on the best tires with the best service has never been easier. Just log on to ConleyTire.net, check out the latest rebates, sales, and promotions, pick out the tires you want, and email, call, or come by. 
for huge savings from the family who's been proudly serving the area for over 32 years. Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. Two big stories coming out of Louisa and Lawrence County tonight on the national level. Sports or entertainment? Where do you want to go first? Entertainment's on top of the pile here, so that's indeed where we'll go. Tyler Childers is going to be on the Tonight Show in a few days, just days after his next album is set to be officially released. Country Squire will be available on August the 2nd. It's available for pre-order now. August the 2nd is this Friday. Childers' debut, Purgatory, was described as being simultaneously modern as well as ancient as the Appalachian Mountains in which the events he tells unfolds. Uh, Bottles and Bibles, live and the Red Barn Radio 1 and 2, some other albums you can also find. Country Squire is set to be released. Some songs of it you can download now. And one of which you can pick to be played on The Tonight Show. Next Tuesday. Two major events and happenings in the career of Tyler Childers this week. First off, his new album, Country Squire, comes out this Friday. You can pre-order it right now. And then, on August the 6th, one week from tonight, he'll be making an appearance on The Tonight Show. And Tyler is even letting us all go to his Facebook page to vote and pick which song off of his new album, Country Squire, he's going to sing. Early in the morning when the sun does rise Laying in the bed with bloodshot eyes Late in the evening when the sun sinks low that's about the time my rooster crows I got women up and down this creek And they keep me going and my engine clean Run me ragged but I don't fret Cause there ain't been one slow me down none yet Childers has been an up-and-coming star now for quite some time from Lawrence County. He graduated from Paintsville High School uh, and is just a talent all to his own right, in my opinion. Here's another one out of Lawrence County for you. This one, this Lawrence County native, got the call, the call of his life, the call to the show. This pitcher is going to get to try out in the majors for the Baltimore Orioles as Chandler Shepard got the call last night and he's on his way to San Diego to join the Orioles in tonight's game. It was definitely a call I'd been waiting on for a while. I'm beyond excited to be here. So, yeah. What's your time in the Orioles organization been like? Uh, it's been great. Um, you know, I went to, uh, you know, whenever I was um, claimed there, I went to Norfolk, Virginia AAA. Um, you know, I got to meet a lot of the guys and uh, kind of get my foot in the door with the organization, got a lot of work in, you know. Uh, Got with the manager down there and the pitching coach, and I uh, was able to improve on a lot of stuff. So happy with the time I've had for sure. The numbers obviously aren't great. Why do you think that is? What's been working? What hasn't been working for you down there? Um, I think for me, just developing uh, some off-speed stuff that uh, I think, uh, which would allow me to get a little deeper into ball games. And I think that been, that's been my issue in the past. Um, so that's something we've been focusing on a lot down there, uh, which I think I've. Definitely made improvements on and, uh, you know, and continuing to do that. You see the constant movement between Norfolk and Baltimore. It must be encouraging when you're at AAA because, you know, you might get that shot, right? Yeah. No, I mean, like you said, it's definitely something that um, everyone's aware of. Um, personally, you know, I, I try not to really pay much attention to that just as long as I can go out every day and uh, do my job, like you said, and continue to work on those things that I mentioned. Uh, you know, I think everything would work out. Shepard, of course, was drafted in the 13th round of the uh, 2014 MLB draft by the Red Sox after three seasons in the SEC with the Kentucky Wildcats. He has had a uh, very steady career, uh, the highlights of which we may just now be getting ready to see. It's going to be a game to watch tonight. Looking forward to it. Here's not your community calendar. For I had a calendar announcement, but it was a bit of a reminder that we'd had from some time, so 
maybe for the first or second time in history, no community calendar tonight, which means I'm going to take a quick break, come back with a road closure and your forecast. If you've never seen what's inside the seasonal shop, you've never seen anything like it. And if you have seen what's inside the seasonal shop, you've never seen it like this. From all the styles of pillows, dishware, bedding, and wall hangings, it's full of beautiful home decor. And there are frames for anyone and any occasion. There are neat and unique ways to design and do it yourself. There are flowers too perfect to be real. And from expecting moms to newborns, toddlers, teens, and adults, the fashions and designs and jewelry are simply endless and always changing at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop. A little of what's new at Parkway Gun and Pawn. A big selection of hunting, bully knives, some to use, some to collect, or both, starting as low as $14.99 a piece. Hey gamers, while they last, they just got in two PS4 Pro editions in perfect condition. And as new, still in the packaging, big flat screens at big discounts. A new selection of kitchen gear and appliances, and even a new in the box 30 gallon electric hot water heater. You never know what you're going to save on, but you're always going to save at Parkway Gun and Pond. Just like that, we've jumped into the spring allergy season with all the buds and blooms, tree and grass pollen, mold, and all the nasal congestion, sneezing, itchy nose and eyes and throat that they cause. Don't get caught off guard. Protect yourself daily with a quick trip to Parkway Pharmacy for over the counter and prescription relief. And you can always log into parkwaypharmacy.com to have your prescriptions ready when you get there at Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville. Big Sandy Healthcare and Hope Family Medical Center are proud to announce the newest addition to their staff and team of over 200 dedicated employees and medical professionals. Podiatrist Dr. Cheryl Stalder Cheney has joined Big Sandy Healthcare at the Hope Family Podiatry Center in Sagersville on Beriah Boulevard, just a couple of doors up from the Lee's Famous Recipe. For anything minor or serious foot or ankle related, Dr. Stalder Cheney is now accepting new patients at Hope Family Podiatry Center in Salyersville. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes, to expert collision and auto body, to turning your 4 before or diesel from mild to wild, get real auto maintenance, paint and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Salyersville. 349-8785. I have a personal story and announcement for you this evening. It is the annual event at my household, which also involves several others. Lacey, of course, as well as Sydney Blanton, Hannah McFarland, and Mackenzie Castle have for the past several years put together a yard sale. So this is a family announcement I have for you tonight. And they're having their yard sale this Friday, excuse me, this Thursday, which is August the 1st as they have for the past several years at the Lee's Famous Recipe lot or next to the Lee's Famous Recipe lot there in uh, Mamma and Papa's old double wide there. That's where they'll be in the front yard. Uh, Lily Pulitzer, Vineyard Vines, Jack Rogers, all names that you probably recognize more so than I. It's a big deal for these ladies. They've been working for weeks now to get stuff together. Uh, and always a big sale and attracts a big crowd. So uh, Lacey and her friends, big yard sale this Thursday morning around 8-ish at the double wide next to Lee's Famous Recipe. Road closure for some Johnson County residents and those traveling this particular area as has been announced by the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet District 12, which includes Johnson County, sent us this depiction of the road work area that's going to close Kentucky 2040 that's near Offutt in Johnson County. This is tomorrow and Thursday, so you'll have to find an alternate route if you're going to be passing through this work zone between Laney Drive and Banjo Branch Road. Work's going to start at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they say it's going to last till 6 o'clock in the evening. And Highway District 12 Engineering Tech Ethan Irwin said the state's contractor will be cribbing to repair an embankment failure. The road is just not wide enough to accommodate the equipment and, of course, keep traffic moving safely through the work zone. So they'll be closing it for the next two days, once again starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. Irwin says they appreciate everyone's understanding and patience. And if the weather cooperates, this temporary inconvenience shouldn't last more than the two scheduled days. And in your weather forecast, we find that showers, for the most part, or bulk of which, Really didn't make up too much today as we were expecting. However, chances will remain in your forecast with the exception of nearly all of your weekend, which is looking practically perfect. But we are not done yet. 
as this clearly illustrates. The forecast calling for a um, slight chance of some showers for the remainder of your evening. Uh, well, that's true, but as you can see, we'll deal with some more. No severe weather. We had a pretty good thunderstorm that uh, came down a couple of hours ago in the downtown area and put down about a half an inch of rainfall in a very short period of time. Some folks seeing very little. Some of us seeing more than that. Some of us will continue to see some showers and a few light thunderstorms for the rest of your evening and the chances of which over the course of the next several days, but not Saturday and barely Sunday. Definitely not as bad as what we thought it may have been, but still continue mostly cloudy skies tonight and a 30% chance of showers mainly before 8, but possibly a few thereafter. Patchy fog after 2 a.m. and a low of 66 degrees to wind down your Tuesday. Tomorrow, it's Wednesday already, and we should see the sun return with the 80s, mid-80s, close to it at least. 84, I think, is where we'll top out. 65 tomorrow night. Scattered showers and thunderstorms to the tune of 30%, mainly after 5 o'clock tomorrow evening. Uh, then isolated thereafter. Thursday, we've got 83, 63 for your high and low. Essentially about the same, more mostly sunny skies and still a 30% chance of showers and storms. Thursday, it's mainly after 4 o'clock again in the latter afternoon and for the remainder of the evening, early evening, 7 or 8 or so. Friday, 84, 63 for your consistent high and low numbers. Mostly sunny skies and a consistent 30% chance of showers again mainly after 5 in the afternoon and for the rest of the early evening. For your weekend, dry for the first half. Almost a guaranteed dry, mostly sunny, beautiful Saturday. 85 degrees and dry, sunny, mostly clear that night. Sunday, mostly sunny and 85, and I think your weekend is going to be perfect because it's not until late Sunday night right now, I think, that we see a 20% chance of showers and storms. Monday of next week, similar note, mostly sunny and 30%. Tuesday, 84, mostly sunny and a 20% chance of showers that we can't shake, with the exception of nearly all of your weekend. And with that, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. A lot of news tomorrow, and we'll see you then. Good night, and thanks for watching.